Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. Guys, I hope all of you are aware about our mobile application as well as this channels or uh, these channels through which you can connect with us. So this is our WhatsApp number. You can call us. You can WhatsApp us in case you have any query. And this is our uh, website. This is our email ID. And we have one more channel that is discussions.anujindal.in. So you can uh, write your queries on that channel and uh, if you have been using that channel then you would have definitely observed that within 24 hours you get your answers so why wait for a long period of time when you have any kind of query uh, and not use the discussions forum so we have that forum use it now last but not the least is the telegram channel of ours so there i and all the mentors of our channel provide you the pdf of the sessions so i have already uploaded the pdf of this session so try to download the pdf from there and read it from the pdf also because using the pdf will help you in retaining the facts for a longer period of time now let's move on to the very first question with which company has the Ministry of Electronics and IT collaborated to launch the G20 Stay Safe online campaign to increase awareness on online safety? So here guys, Meta is the right answer. So that is one news, G20 Stay Safe online campaign and we have one more news that is the first edition of the G20 Employment Working Groups meeting was held in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. So these are the two meetings uh, related to the G20. So let's quickly revise the facts related to G20. The very first fact is that in 1999, the G20 was created. Okay. And the second fact is that this is the 18th summit of the G20. One Earth, One Family, One Future. Vasudhevam Kutumbakam. This is the theme of the G20 Summit 2023. So do remember these facts and I hope you remember the countries of the G20 and the mnemonic which I gave you to remember the G20 countries. In case you have created your own mnemonic or the uh, story to remember the countries then also share it with me as well so that I also get to know how creative my students are. And one more thing guys. Do not take the sessions, do not take the PDF and the preparation lightly because these uh, preparations are the steps that which you are taking towards your goal. Okay, so don't ignore any of the steps otherwise you will trip down the ladder and won't be able to reach your destination. So let's move on to the question number two, which is the first WTO member to ratify the agreement on fisheries subsidies. So here guys. Switzerland is the right answer. So first of all, let me tell you that WTO, the World Trade Organization, has different agreements. First is the agreement on trade. Then we have the agreement on trade. Uh, the agreement on trade deals with the merchandise. Then we have agreement on services. Then we have agreement for the trade of intellectual properties, that is trips. And now we have agreement on fisheries subsidies. So this agreement was finalized during the 12th conference ministerial of the WTO in Geneva last year. Okay, so this, these are the very background facts related to the agreement on fisheries and subsidies and WTO in itself. So these agreements basically deal with the way of conducting the business. Okay, for example, if we are talking about trips, so it deals with the intellectual property rights. If we are talking about the services, so it deals with the services trade among the countries across the world. Now, this agreement on fisheries and subs fisheries subsidies will deal with the subsidies given by the countries on the fisheries practices. Okay, so now let's move into the news in detail. First of all, Switzerland is the first WTO member to ratify the agreement on fisheries subsidy. Now, the basic highlight of this agreement is that it prohibits subsidies to illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing and bans subsidies for fishing overfished stocks and for fishing on the unregulated high seas. Now, usually countries basically give the subsidies to its fishermen so that they uh, try to they exploit the fishes and they catch more and more 
fishes okay because fisheries also contribute a lot to the gdp and how much fishery is a sector contributes to india's gdp this fact we are going to look in a little short while okay but first we are going to look at this practice which the countries across the world are doing at present they basically give the subsidies to their farmers and they do not even pay attention to the overfishing done by the farmers or the unregulated unreporting fish, unreported fishes or the illegal fishes fishing that the farmers do in order to increase their business now the wto has considered the entire scenario and released this agreement on fisheries subsidies okay so from now onwards if any country is giving subsidies without checking that whether the fisheries was uh, fishing was done uh, in a legalized manner or it is not the overfished stock if if a country has not checked it then the country would not be able to give the subsidies or in case if give if the country gives the subsidies then that country would be liable for the uh not the punishment but definitely a suit can also be filed against that country within the wto only okay so that can be the uh, recourse in case any country violates the agreement on fishery subsidies however kitni countries ne abhi to sign kiya hai it's just this switzerland Now we are talking about this beautiful country Switzerland जिसको यश राज चोपड़ा की फिल्मों में हमने बचपन से देखा है सो लेट्स हैव सर्टन फैक्ट अबाउट द फिशरी सॉरी स्विट्जरलैंड सो फर्स्ट फैक्ट अबाउट स्विट्जरलैंड इज दैट बर्न इज द कैपिटल ऑफ स्विट्जरलैंड एंड सेकेंड इज दैट स्विस फ्रैंक इज द करेंसी ऑफ स्विट्जरलैंड एंड द वेरी फेमस एरियाज और द स्नो लेडन माउंटेन्स विच वी सी in the movies are nothing but the alps mountains okay so alp is the range of the mountain which goes from different countries and a major proportion of this alps is there in switzerland only and this uh, mountain range particularly adds up to the beauty of this country now my question begins and my question is that in how many countries is this mountain range spread this is your task do tell me in the comment section below now let's have a little bit more on the agreement on fisheries subsidies so as i have already told you that during the ministerial conference of the wto in 2022 in geneva this was agree, uh, this was accepted it was a 12th ministerial conference which was held in 2022 and the basic idea of this agreement was to ensure the ocean sustainability because fishes uh contribute a very significant proportion for maintaining the biodiversity and the food chain of the oceans and because of the overfishing of the fishes the food chain is getting disturbed in the ocean so that is the major reason of the ecosystem uh disruption in the ocean so this agreement basically aims to prohibit the harmful fishery subsidies which act as a key factor for motivating the farmers to do more and more fishing it will prohibit subsidies from being provided for illegal unreported and unregulated fishing and overfished stocks the agreement also prohibits the providing of subsidies for fishing on the high seas now if you guys remember yesterday only i taught you the different divisions of the sea zones according to the united nation convention on the law of the seas so if you remember then you would have definitely understood the context of this high sea okay so high sea is the area which is under the international parlance so it is not uh it does not belong to any particular country like the exclusive economic zone so high seas pe sabhi countries ka control hai so what do the fishermen do they go to the high seas and uh exploit more and more fishes china se related ye bahut bada issue hai china also does this thing that it overfishes and exploit the stock and also does the mineral explore, exploration in the high seas and in the south china sea so this is one of the mal practices that the countries across the world are engaged in so in order to curb this practice the agreement has come into effect so uh the uh, subsidies will be prohibited on the fishing on the high seas which are outside the jurisdiction of the coastal countries and regional fisheries management organizations and arrangement but have you ever thought since the time period i am teaching you this question have you ever thought that how will the countries manage to monitor whether the fisherman has a uh, cap has captured this fish from the internal waters from the ex economic exclusive zone 
or from the high seas how will the uh, countries ensure that uh, in my opinion the countries can set up the monitoring systems and also it can also put the coast guards on this work to monitor the fishing fishing vessels going in the high seas or in our territorial waters so these can be the options through which the countries can monitor the fishing stocks and the fishing practices in the nation obviously there can be more uh, options for monitoring it so that will come out when india will take more steps on it and other countries also ratify this agreement now we have of the agreement on the fisheries subsidies the fisheries sectors and the mal practices related to fisheries now is the time that we should talk about the fisheries contribution in india's gdp so here guys <coughs> sorry india is the second largest fish producing country in the world accounting for 7.56% of the global pro, uh, production and contributing about 1.24% of the country's gross value added uh, addition and uh, over 7.2% to the agriculture's gro uh, gross value added okay so obviously in india also we have seen this problem of overfishing and that is the that is uh, this agreement on fisheries subsidies is also going to have a greater bearing for india as well because india is a developing country we have also launched the pm matsya sampada yojana in order to increase the fisheries sector's contribution to the gdp and give a boost to the fisheries uh, fishery sector and marine economy of our nation but when we have this kind of an agreement in place it is to be seen that what kind of impact would it have on india's fishing economy okay that is something to be seen but at present understand this point that india is the second largest fishing fish producing country so definitely this agreement is going to have a greater bearing for india as well now india aims to achieve a target of producing 22 million metric tons of fish by 2024 to 2025 so this is a very important target and uh, if we have to make sure that this target remains sustainable and we do not engage in the practices of overfishing and exploit the fishes in the high sea okay now one more thing that i wanted to highlight that is the pm matsya sampada yojana so i hope you remember it that it was launched as part of the atmanirbhar package which the prime minister launched during the covid period okay so the total outlay of this pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana is rupees 20050 crores okay so guys these are some of the important schemes which you should all cover and also you need to maintain or practice a question on the ocean sustainability marine economy blue economy these all are different terms for the same concept that is the sustainability of the oceans and the economic benefits that we derive from it so do prepare one answer on this question you can expect this in your esi or in your english descriptive essay as well okay now let's discuss question number 3 so which bank has recently received approval from the department of financial services under the ministry of finance to have four executive directors instead of three <coughs> so here guys indian bank is the right answer department of financial services has approved indian bank to have four executive directors and uh, the background fact related to the bank is that it is located in allahabad headquarters and your own bank is the tagline now my question from all of you is you have to tell me the current chief of this bank in the comment section below question number 4 is which company owns the biz khata business platform so here airtel payment bank owns this platform what is the news the news is that this business khata is basically a current account for the businessman okay and we know that in the current account first of all these current accounts are for the businesses only and a lot of tran transactions are undertaken by using the current account right so that is why businesses use the current account and the airtel payment bank offers this facility to the small businesses so that they can undertake fast uh activation of the services and limitless transactions can be done by using the current account called business khata or biz khata 
Now, what is the current news? The current news is that Airtel Payment Bank has launched this BIS Khata facility across the nation. Okay, so this BIS Khata business platform unifies all corporate transactions on the one platform and enables them to keep accurate records while taking advantage of several financial uh, financial services. Okay, so this particular service caters to the small and medium business owners. MSMEs ko target karti hai this BIS Khata because they have this uh. Uh, they have they face this problem of maintaining proper records and at the same time they do not have that much of facility to go to the bank or basically this uh, is acting as an addition to the banking services okay so these kinds of private companies help in uh, in increasing the financial inclusion in our nation now this is a part of the neo banking okay so not exactly the neo banks neo bank term is specifically used for the banks which are digital How, however i want to tell you that the small finance bank and the payment banks are the new concepts in the banking sector in india okay so these are the small finance banks and these are the payment banks which are scheduled in india and i hope all of you know what is the meaning of a scheduled bank scheduled bank basically refers to those banks which are listed in the schedule 2 of the rbi act of 1934 and there are certain benefits relaxations concessions which are given to these listed banks that is why this acts as an incentive for the banks to get themselves listed on the schedule second okay now uh, before going on to the next question i have one question and that is you have to tell me the current chief of the airtel payments bank the last question of the day is which life insurance company has launched the sustainable equity fund so here guys bajaj alliance life insurance company is the right answer now this sustainable equity fund is another type of insurance product which is there for the investors so it will offer investors an opportunity to invest in companies that are socially responsible and have been evaluated on relevant environment social and governance factors okay the fund will invest in businesses that have high esg scores and will concentrate on stocks that are included in the benchmark esg indices so basically the sustainable equity fund is like the mutual fund theek hai so it will collect the money from investors and invest in the companies which have high esg scores basically the companies which undertake the projects related to environment sustainability or social purposes or governance improvement okay so if a project is done in any of these three sectors then that company would have a higher score of esg and this particular fund would invest in that company okay so that is the basic idea of this fund and the, like the green bonds what is the purpose of green bond the green bond is basically to uh, attract money for the green projects similarly this sustainable equity fund will definitely work for the sustainability purposes okay so right now we are seeing a trend across the world uh, which is towards the clean energy which is which is towards the um, you can say sustainability right the countries are investing in the sustainability then we have the governments going for the sustainable projects the clean energy projects so it is a very potential sector uh, which is going to boom in the 10 years or so and that is why this fund is also going to give a lot of returns to the investors now i have told uh, told you about the green bonds so let me tell you that recently sebi has released the guidelines for the green bonds and in those guidelines वैसे तो वो गाइडलाइंस इतने ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट थे नहीं बिकॉज दोज गाइडलाइंस वर जस्ट दी ऑपरेशनल गाइडलाइंस बट इन दोज गाइडलाइंस देर वॉज वन थिंग दैट वॉज ऑफ अटमोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंस एंड दैट थिंग वॉज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ब्लू एंड येलो बॉन्ड्स सो ब्लू बॉन्ड्स एंड येलो बॉन्ड्स आर बोथ अ सबसेट ऑफ द ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स ओके अ पार्ट ऑफ द ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स सो इन द ब्लू बॉन्ड्स द मनी विल बी इन्वेस्टेड फॉर द मरीन इको सिस्टम और फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट विच एम टू इंक्रीज द ओशन सस्टेनेबिलिटी and in the yellow bonds the money will be invested in the projects that will work for increasing this solar energy in our nation okay so that's the recent update that all of you should be aware of now as far as the sebi's operational guidelines for green bonds are concerned i have already told you that they were operational guidelines it has uh, nothing important from the exams perspective so you can clearly skip the operational guidelines but also do not uh, skip the green yellow and blue bond in india last but not the least one more news is there 
that is Kotak Banking and Financial Services Fund has also been launched and it is an open-ended equity fund. It will invest in the banking and services sectors. Okay, so that is the basic idea of this mutual fund. So here guys, this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the video. In case you have any query, if you have any suggestion, you can provide it in the comment section below. Have a good day. Keep working hard and you will definitely reach your destination.